Good morning, good afternoon, or good evening everybody. Welcome back to my YouTube channel and to another installment of the N-Scale layout build in my workshop. If you've been watching the last couple of episodes, you will have seen me get the straight portion of the upper level of the peninsula built. This week I'm going to get around the corner and finish the curved end of that peninsula. So without further ado, let's just head out to the workshop and get busy. Well, with this corner piece being done still fairly early in the day, I'm going to move right on with the next one. Now, I have approximately seven feet of the peninsula still to go. Actually, it's seven foot one. So, all things being equal, it makes sense to do two frames about three and a half feet wide. Anyway, 42 inches comes to this line, and that doesn't give me a very widespread on the on the backdrop so I think I'm gonna make it a four foot frame come up to about here where the backdrop is twice as wide and that will give me more stability at the point where it's easiest to screw it down so I'm gonna do about a four foot frame and then a three foot frame so the first thing I think I'm gonna do is get a long strip of plywood temporarily positioned in approximately the right place so let me just figure out the best way to frame this and I'll be right back. Don't go away. Well, this is how I worked out where the next piece of framing goes. I told you I deliberately made this curve longer than it needed to be so I had some off cut. It also meant that I can overlap it, clamp the two together. I ripped that board to six inches wide so I know I've got exactly a six inch setback and then I just kept adjusting it until I had six inches off the level. So now, other than the fact that it's three and a half inches too low, that board is in exactly the right place. So I can now temporarily install the opposing framing over the top of it and then get everything cut the length. So let me get on with that and I will be right back. Well, I think I might have made a mistake when I framed up this piece yesterday this end curve. I think I miscalculated the angle of curvature. I probably, it should have been about 10 degrees more because this end is supposed to come right in here. Yep. I can leave it straight as far as here and then frame a corner Or I might be able to use an offcut of one of the curved pieces, either this one or the bit that I cut off there, to put in here so that it, so that it can be at a better angle. The alternative is to go back to Lowe's and buy another sheet of plywood. I'm not sure why I want to do that. So let me think about this and come up with a solution and I'll be right back. Well, I think I can make it work with the parts I have available without going back to Lowe's, which is fortunate because being July 4th, they're probably closed today. I've clamped that curved off cut in behind the straight piece and it looks as though it's got almost as much curvature as it needs. I think I can make the rest by belt sanding the first part of this straight into the rest of the curve where it joins up. And this will be about where I want the joint anyway. So I think I can do it with just one splice. This end is now in about the right place. The setback at the end of the peninsula is more like 10 inches than six, but that was always gonna be more anyway because it's not needed for track or anything like that. There's gonna be a lake scene or something like that in front of the track. I think the original drawings called for eight inches set back there. So we lose an extra couple of inches of the lake water, which I don't think is an issue. So what I've got to do next is get this piece cut off at both ends and the curve spliced into the end of it. So let me do that and then I can offer it up into position again and see if it's gonna work. If not, it will be back to Lowe's tomorrow. 
Well, after further consideration, I have decided that with the wood that I have available, I can only get it nearly right. So I have made the executive decision that I will go to Lowe's tomorrow and get another sheet of plywood. Final answer. So I guess there's not much more I can really do today. Well, not in this area anyway. There is more framing to build over the top of the main yard. But I don't feel like moving everything over to there today. So I will just get the corner former in here and then call that a day. Well, I decided to call Lowe's just on the off chance they might be open today, and they were. So I was able to get the plywood I need and get these two curved frames re-glued. So now they can set up overnight and I can continue first thing in the morning instead of having to wait till Thursday. So that reduced the delay to just one day instead of two. And I will check in with you tomorrow. Don't go away. Well, here is that same area temporarily clamped together with the new curved frames. And this time it fits absolutely perfectly. On this diagonal piece, I put a slightly larger radius at the end so that it would gradually curve into it. And the two are arranged to line up perfectly at this point. So that is where I'm gonna draw the line and cut them off. And this is now a more acceptable setback. It's seven and a half inches at this widest point. Yesterday I was quoting it wrong. I thought I was. I measured from the inside of the level instead of the outside. So whatever I said it was yesterday, it was actually two inches more, which is why it looked too much. Anyway, what I'm gonna do next is get this piece out of the way. And I'm going to mark both ends of this one where it's gonna be cut and then work out where the cross member sits on top of the backdrop. So let me get organized to do that and I'll be right back. Don't go away. Well, I have pretty much got everything worked out. This bracket here on top of the backdrop is already permanently attached. This beam is just clamped to it temporarily. I haven't trimmed the ends off yet. Ignore the two by four. That's just something that I used to visualize what I needed and figure out where it went. This front curved piece is clamped in the right place below the frame level, so I can draw on there, or I have drawn on there. And then the rear curved one is positioned in the right place on top of the beam, and I've just drawn under it. So now I can remove the beam, cut both ends off to the exact length, and then put it back in place. I can't bolt it set in yet, because the same bolts will go through the next frame as well. So I'll just install it with clamps for now. I mean, let me get that done and I'll be right back. Well, that is the front and the two ends permanently installed. I haven't put the bolts in here yet. That will be the next task. And then I'm gonna get on with the back. Had a little bit of a, an annoying discovery earlier. This front piece is not quite in the right place. It is set back about an eighth of an inch further than was intended because the clamp moved and I didn't notice it until I'd already cut everything to length. And by that stage, it was too late. So the setback here is six and one eighth of an inch instead of six inches even. But I'm willing to bet that no one would ever have noticed if I hadn't come clean about it. Well, I've now framed up the back and finished the last cantilever bracket. All I need in this frame now is two more joists in this area, and then I can call that one done. And then this afternoon, I will move on to the end piece. The last frame on the peninsula, although not the last one that I'm doing. I still have one above the freight yard. So I'm gonna go in and get some lunch, and I'll see you this afternoon. Don't go away. Well, that is the upper level of the peninsula, fully framed up. all the way to the end. This diagonal framing here forms an extra cantilever, otherwise this front curve would have been largely unsupported. But this piece screwed to that block means that this is as solid as can be. It's 
not quite time to go in yet. I think what I'm going to do is go around and drill all, all the wiring holes. There's not a huge number of them since there's a very low track density on this level. So basically just one good size hole somewhere near where the track goes. And that's all we need. So let me do that and I'll be right back. Well, I now have all the wiring holes from this point all the way around the peninsula following the edge in most cases about six inches to a foot back wherever I get to these cantilever brackets I've had to go around the end of them because I don't want to route wires through them because that makes it a lot more difficult to take the railroad apart so all the way around This is quite a long way for an end scale layout. And all the way around to here. I couldn't get the drill in to drill holes in the middle at this point. So I just use it to cut a groove in the top of the joists and that will work. It looks a bit unsightly, but you'll never see it once the top's on. I got about two thirds of the way round and I had to stop because the drill was getting way too hot. I didn't want to risk burning it out. So I did the blocking underneath the double sided backdrop. If you recall this last six foot section is a separate piece and I've put four blocks of wood underneath to give it positive location. Making sure that I wrapped each block with two layers of masking tape just so that once I take it out I can get rid of the tape and it has a little bit of tolerance so it will go back in easily. Anyway, that's all I'm going to do today. It's 5.30 and I think that's a pretty good day's work. So I'm going to go in and I'll see you tomorrow. Don't go away. Well, that's all for this episode. Well, having reached the end of the peninsula, the second level framing is not quite finished yet. I still have to go back and build the area above the freight yard. That will be a project for the next episode, and I hope to see you back here for that. So in the meantime, thanks for watching, and bye for now.